Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM quick tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. This is the seventh video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and link the full playlist down in the description below. While my tips are geared towards advanced Dungeons and Dragons, many of them should be useful to you no matter which version that you play. Alright, tip number one. I'm currently working on my campaign planning series, which a few of you have actually requested, a few different people have requested, kind of exciting. I think one of the most important tips I have generated from that so far is to not over plan. Now, that's certainly true for a campaign session. When starting something new, <laughs> for me at least, it's tempting to plan out a ton of history, NPCs, draw a bunch of maps, and just get a whole ton of information that I'll never need or never use. In my first edition campaign that I'm running now, I have finally created and released an NPC journal which highlights a few bits of information that may or may not be relevant in upcoming campaigns. Now, we're actually several games into this, and this is actually our third module. I've been kind of fast-forwarding the modules a little bit just so we can get a taste of, of some different ones. And this is my way of trying to make the modules a little bit more cohesive and make sense together. But it's been several campaigns, and we're three modules in before I bothered to even try to make anything a little more cohesive than this is what happened last time, this is what we're going to do next time. And even then, I may have put in too much information in this, but it's in my player's hands now, so we're going to see how it goes. You know, I'm happy, though, that I did wait this long, because had I done it earlier, it would have taken the game in a completely different direction than where I think we're going. Sometimes, waiting is good. Now, tip number two. I know, along these same lines, I have to remind myself that I am not a professional game designer or publisher or whatever. Not my job. Um, my content will not, indeed, probably should not, look as good as something that was published by TSR back in the day or Wizards of the Coast today. Instead, my content needs to be packaged for me and to work for me. I do have a few items on DM's Guild where I put in quite a bit of extra effort to try to make things nice, but they're nowhere near the quality of a professionally published module. So I guess the tip is to not be too hard on yourself. If what you are creating works for you, then that's probably good enough. You know, when you're creating game content for yourself, what standard do you set for yourself? Do you revise a bunch? Or do you just run with your first draft? I think I've kind of learned just to stick with the first draft. I know it's going to change during play. But tip number three is I do have a bit of a confession to make. You know, I have never been ambitious enough to create an entire fantasy world completely from scratch. Even back when I tried my hand at writing novels, I had created a fairly extensive outline of the world, but at its heart, it was basically a reskinning of the Greyhawk setting, which is the first setting that I played in. When creating a new world in D&D, my mind pretty much defaults to Greyhawk. That's true even if I'm playing in the Forgotten Realms or somewhere else, some more abstract, I'm always thinking more Greyhawkish. Um, the creating a world at the gaming table should be done with the players over the course of gameplay. And, you know, over all the sessions that you play in, it's not just something that you do once and it's static, it changes. You know, to start with, all the DM really needs is just the barest of details. Pretty much just enough to get started. You don't want to overplan too much. But tip number four, uh, one thing you can do is identify something that makes your world unique from the rest. You can do this even if you're, if you're running a published adventure and just need some stuff to kind of link one adventure to the other. Just pick out something. Pick out an NPC. Pick out an event. Pick out something in those adventures and borrow it from movies, books, you know, and and so forth. If I were to start an adventure right now today, I would probably start by basing it off the Black Death movie. It came out a few years ago, but I just recently watched it. Um, good movie, by the way. Uh, not family friendly, exactly, but it's a good movie. 
but for myself, I would focus on monks in a monastery, and there's a plague sweeping over my world, and I would kind of focus on the populace's responses to it. My first adventure would probably focus on introducing the players and maybe having them escort healthy people or maybe more like uh, wealthy people to safety because they could actually pay for the uh, escort. Maybe they encounter some other healthy people and who, you know, also want their help. So I'd probably do something along those lines just kind of off the top of my head just to start a fresh campaign even if I were to run roll that into a, some kind of published module. I, you know, and then where it would go after that would completely depend on what the players did. I might have some ideas. Um, a coven of witches, or those who die start to raise as zombies. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing set in stone there, and that's just kind of off the top of my head right there. But tip number five is, whatever hook you use, just know that, you know, hooks can be broken down in just a few categories, such as somebody wants something from somebody else, somebody needs help, you know, like in the escort mission example. There's a lost treasure needs to be recovered. Maybe there's an evil wizard, you know, things like that. Another easy example, and I take this from the Forest of Doom fighting fantasy book, you run across a dying NPC who needs you to finish their quest for them. In that book, you had to go recover two parts of a hammer somewhere inside the Forest of Doom. Simple enough to come up with a very simple plot hook like that, and then they go on a big, huge adventure. And, you know, a variation of that would be to make the NPC someone that the characters actually knew or had some connection to. That way they would be more inclined to act. Uh, in the Forest of Doom, it was just a random stranger that you find. In one of my modules, I just have an NPC claim to recognize one of the PCs and claim they were told by some fortune teller that that PC was going to help them do whatever needed to be done. And you know what? I've ran that game a few different times, including some conventions, and every time the players buy right in, oh, I was foretold that I was going to be here? Well, wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and act. And, we're gonna go, and they buy into the plot right away. Sometimes there's a little bit of, you know, resistance or reluctance because they want to know more about the fortune teller. But hey, that's just part of it, right? You could have a whole part of the game just exploring just that one aspect. You know, if you really get stuck trying to come up with adventure ideas these days, just go online to a quick search and you'll get hundreds, thousands of seed ideas. They're free. They're pretty good. If I just needed a quick town or something, I just hop online to some generator, uh, put in the parameters. It'll spit out exactly what I need. I tweak it a little bit and hey, and I would have the town I needed. I probably would have the city or the, you know, whatever size it is, countryside, a few NPC names, a few job names, you know, a lot of those things that you don't really have to spend a lot of time working on anymore. You can focus more on making, taking that and modifying it and making it what you want it to be. Well, thanks for taking a look. Uh, what quick tips would you add? Uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.